Hello folks, I was going to do this yesterday, uh, I like to do these on a Monday, but it was uh, pressing, I did something else, so we'll do this Tuesday. So Citizens Band Radio Magazine for February 1982, so bearing in mind CB became legal on November the 4th in 1981, this is just three months into legal CB, and I had to buy this magazine off eBay because I couldn't find my copy, I know my friend Mark G7NDJ has got a copy but um, he kind of comes once a month and stays and I wanted to get on with this so I have to admit I paid 12 99 delivered but there you go so the reason I wanted this particular magazine is because we've been looking at, at media haven't we like records and cassette tapes So we've got a 1978 record, we're going to be doing this Friday, which is this one, the one with the lady on the front, American record. That American record was a lot better than the uh, UK record with the frightfully British uh, Time Tease television announcer, but um, it did have its errors. They were getting things muddled up. So, yeah, that's going to be a good record. So that's Friday. Then next Friday... We've got another two cassettes here, and we're going to see if they're in this magazine. We've got the official guide to CB radio from Sound Products, and we've got the David Lee Travis CB guide from Radio Mobile. So perhaps when you spent £119.99 on one of their radios, you got a cassette. Now these are copies which my friend David has very kindly made for me. Um, He's not sure of the quality of this one, but he's sure of the quality of this one. So we'll see with those uh, in a couple of weeks' time. So that is fantastic of David to do that for me. We want to proliferate this kind of material, don't we? This is what my channel here is about, the information and, and these magazines. Um, I'm the kind of person... Who buys this magazine for twelve ninety nine and then scans it and uploads it for free use? So it's a video, isn't it? The CB video. Can't say I've seen that. Anyway, we're going to look at this because of some really good adverts. We've got the Rotel advertisement with the RVC two forty on the front. So that's nice. I think I've uh, scanned some of these adverts. I have them. I have some framed um, pictures like this around the house. Don't have pictures of from Constable and Money and people like that. I have CB adverts. I'm not even a CB. -er. There we have the Kaiser products. I don't know if we ever saw that. We've got that hand portable. I don't like the way they sell um, two watt sets. What was it? What did it say? It was half, two watts and it's half a watt or something. I don't like the way that's sold. Not, I've not seen that. Now, yeah, who's this guy? Well, it's Mike Devereaux. And he's the CEO of Nevada. So he's looking a bit younger there, isn't he, when he was, it was Mike Devereaux Music. Usual questions and answers but you see some nice pictures like the um, Bandstone Route 66 somebody doing a 934 meg SWR meter because, we, because back then we got 934 meg 20 channel as well Ford were going to produce two radios to go in their motor cars and it was the 201 and 202 no the 505 and the 202 something like that We've covered them both on this channel. Another one to scan and use as a as a picture. We didn't get many Cobras, did we? We got this this 21X FM, which of course is the same chassis as the Midland Precision series in the Maxcom 4E for £79. They did that emergency set, the one with the flip-out red top. And then we got a 
hideaway set in the 90s, early 90s, followed by another hideaway set, which all the electronics is in the headset, handset, so it gets red hot. Really not a good idea at all. But the first hideaway is a, real, is a nice set, uh, but not the second one. And then it went downhill from then onwards, and all very swish looking, but dire performance from then on. Go to the French Ri Riviera and have a camping holiday. All right. Another one to scan and frame the Amstrad 900, always made in Japan, 901. And one of the reasons they replaced the Action Man mic was it was that you were having to press the PTT bar and instead of pressing it normally you kind of got to press it extra super hard because the mouldings were all wrong and then they're doing a review on the Amstrad but their reviews weren't very technical and oh dear oh dear you know they, I remember them doing the Fidelity 1000 versus the York 861 and they were very diplomatic with the Fidelity 1000 and you need to know this is the trouble when manufacturers start um, giving you things to review. And I know Thunderpole's kindly given us that um, T3000 we're using, the test car. And I said to them, I mean, I, I already knew it was fantastic. But I did say to them, I will say the truth. You know, if it, if it, <laughs> it comes out of the box not doing four watts, I'll say so. Um, then... Another one of the Edgware Road um, people doing CV stuff. Now, here, this is what this is what we come for. This is it. So, some of these books. I'm going to zoom in. We'll kind of look at them in blocks, and I'll try and line them up with the um, camera. First one, CB Jargon by Wheel and Deal Publications, the EC Bocot Research Tree Team, PO Box 20, Birmingham. CB Radio. Stratis uh, Caramanolis, something like that, uh, by Colin B. Newbury. So this is from Greece, and he lives in Germany. Right. Fun to have them all, wouldn't it? I, I do have some of these books, but I'm, CB Radio, a handbook, Richard Nichols from Starbucks. Um... I think we've got that one. Let's go up the page. CB is Bible. Oh, yeah. um, PA Box 20 Birmingham, the EC Bocot research team. It's that one um, there with the truck on the front. I think it's full of um, 10 codes and stuff like that. Binders don't guide to choosing your legal CB radio. That's good. Obviously, it talks about their sets, and that's that little small pamphlet type of book there. Got that. Big Dummy's Guide to CB Radio, US version, and then there's the, there was a UK version. The Big Dummy's Guide to, oh, here we are, British, to British CB Radio is that one. Big Howl's British CB Handbook. That was Halfords. I haven't got that. The Binance Zone CB directory. When I went back to that photo, it's a small format pamphlet. The official CB language, language dictionary. Yeah, very much uh, your American type of thing. The Fidelity Guide to CB Radio is another good 
small book. CB Radio Projects is FG... Sorry, it's Robert Penfold, this one. I think it was the FG Rare one. Um, yeah, I mean, they're uh, valid projects to build. Uh, things like... Um, I don't know if there's a power supply. What's he got? A cordless microphone, a high-pass aerial filter. And, he, he, you know, he's still going as a technical writer, as far as I understand. Robert Penfold. That will be available if you scour around, and I bet you cost you a tenner upwards. CB language in Great Britain. Yeah, right. Complete CB radio. The British CB book, uh, Chippendale. I don't think he's a Chippendale in the strippers. I only know that because I inadvertently, when, when I worked at Nottingham Radio, I had a flat above the premises because it's uh, like 35 miles. It saved me commuting. And it was it does help security when you've got somebody on the premises. And um, I'd got, um, I mean, I don't have TV. I've not had TV since uh, 2000 when it went digital. But I did have TV and there was, um, it was diamond cable back then in, in Nottingham. And I had the, some bottom of the range package uh, for that. And uh, I'm, Record time I recorded something off, um, it was a black and white um, film channel. I think it was called Bravo, and it was all black and white films and from the 30s and that. It really appealed to me. Anyway, I time recorded something to come to record at like quarter past four in the afternoon. When I played the tape back, it had gone to a channel which I didn't even subscribe to, and it was these blokes uh, slowly taking the kit off. Anyway, I said to Mrs. Smith, who was the co-owner, I says, I recorded this Chippendales thing. Oh, yeah, she says, I'll have a look at that. I said, I never got the tape back. Convoy. Um, uh, we've moved on to records, haven't we? Is that because they are up here, the books? Citizens Bandy, FM Way, Keith Townsend. I'm sure we've looked at that. It's possible that it's got dodgy binding on that, which falls apart. CB Bible is that another pretty American one. You've got a list here of of those, which I'll just keep on there. So I don't think any of those are going to be 99 pence anymore. Tandis did a good one as well for £1.49. So then it talks about um, films, I suppose, or all these records. Well, it is a record, so it's the music from Convoy... Teddy Bear. I didn't realise that uh, is it Savine Savine? Um, he died when his car left the road and hit a tree. Which he was only in his fifties or something like that. It, anyway, that's that one. One nine for Santa. The ankle bites bite from the Freehold Junior School. Right. I'm sure, I want to listen to that. CB Independence. Wall to wall, citizens band. Uncle Charlie said Roger D. Freewheeling rap. Barnsley Hill. CB Baby. I've got a list of these anyway, and again I'll keep that on the screen for a bit. Convoy and ten super trucking hits. The CB song from Citizens Band. Riding the Big A. Here we go. Dave Lee Travis and Richard Hudson Evans guide to CB radio. So that's going to be this cassette tape. And Richard Hudson Evans. Thank you, David. There's a list of them. So, was it Teach Yourself CB we did the other week? So, the David Lee Travis one we're going to do. Everything you need to know. What's this? Is that the other cassette? Now, this is the official guide to CB radio. So, it's not 
covered that. Mmm. CB for beginners. It's not that record, is it? No, that's uh, everything you need to know. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything you need to know is, of course, that one at the top. That's the record we're doing on Friday. CB for beginners. This American recording consists of a solitary voice advising you how to operate on the air. I don't think the style of tape is much use to the average new breaker. Not only is it thoroughly American, it's also difficult to listen to. The narrator's voice has a certain hypnotic quality about it, but I don't think the effect was intentional. Not recommended unless you have a history of insomnia. Well, that's what we're going to do on Friday, so everybody's going to fall asleep at the wheel if they've been listening to that and they've... Uh, listening on the car radio. Teach yourself CB. Now that's the one we did. It's a very worthwhile uh, introduction. Right, good. Beginning to show its age a year later. Wheel to Reel, 11 track LP on tape. What else have we got? Well, Convoy. I think we need to know about that. The CB video produced by Roger Tuff of Tuff Video. Which rig to buy and how to install it? Well, I've ne never seen that. Oh, Breaker Breaker and Smoking the Bandit. So that covered those records and tapes. So we've got some that they haven't and there we are. So I thought we'd look at that. Harrier CB, which of course is Simon. Let's go back to normal. Um, we won't see anything, will we? Let's go back to standard. There we go. And then we'll bring it out a bit more. About like that. Lovely set. Um, Cybernet 134. You can't go wrong. And no silly knobs that do nothing. Just on our volume squelch and channel. Interceptor TC300, yeah, it's a bit of a funny set that, isn't it? Um, I can't say they work brilliantly. Antenna review, the JWR7166, well JWR aren't doing CB these days. Farmers, well of course we get a lot of that around here, I'm in the middle of a rural area. Pan International, did they do anything for the UK that was actually illegal? Indexed to 1981 CB magazine. The Chelsea CB Centre. The Colt 295, when we did the 295A last week. Custom Equip. That aeroplanes. Bantone breaker phone, as shown on the front cover. Uh, so you've got a remote, extended local remote set. You wouldn't want this in the car because the cops would think you're on a blooming phone, wouldn't they? <laughs> An old-fashioned car phone with a curly cord. Uh, I do like some of the technology in this. It's not the best working set in the world, but they usually do nearly 4 watts, and uh, the only thing really weak-wise is squelch. But uh, one of the nifty things is the chip set it uses, it uses the, sen the synthesizer chip, the Sanyo LC7137, like a lot of sets do, but it also goes on to use some serial data chips and a scan generator chip done by Sanyo to go with those phase lock loop chips. It's 7181791. So instead of having, it's got le I'll start again, it's got less wires going up this handset than most of the others because it uses serial data. Now the Audio Line 342 remote also uses the chipset, but this does go one stage further. And when you switch to PA, it niftily says PA on the digital display, uh, which is part of that chipset capability. And at the time, back in 81, that was pretty cool. Of course they probably hate it. There's did 3.9 watts. 
Of course, I don't know what they're measuring it on, do I? Midland Telecom magazines. Ah, oh, yes, there's Grandstand Base Station, Barracuda HP 940. Trans Interceptor Transceiver 7995. Club News. Unless you've got your photo in this, it's not really very interesting. And this ridiculous um, British rig guide, which wasn't accurate because it covered sets which just never existed. Let's go through this and try not to waste too much time. Air Bear UK never actually did the RHB35. I wrote to them and got the letter returned. So let's look at the Binatone breaker phone, beam breaker, Route 66, long ranger. Now you've got the long ranger, 6 channel, 12 channel and 40 channel. So it became 3. There's also the 2 channel, um, 200 milliwatt. The power base, never, the base station never happened and the speedway did happen. That was Cybernet 134. So you, we've just looked at the breaker phone. The beam breaker is a uh, Falcon FCB 1281 stroke compact 40 um, we know that what the route 66 is, is quite independent and the speedway is a cybernet so there we are the one and only Cobra is the 21 XFM the Colt 295 is the same chassis cybernet 1000 2000 3, so you've got cybernet 135 cybernet 135 cybernet 134 DNT base for B40 uh, we did one the other day which was troublesome the M40 uh, mobile Again, they are troublesome these days with the three crystal mixers and the uh, dry joints. They were dry joints when they were new, I, I promise you. I don't get on with these, but I do know that um, um, some people do. Um, they're only half-watt handles, and again, they're sold as two-watt, but that was the German way of advertising. Don't like it. CB1000, CB2000, because later they did the 2000, and while they did the 3000 base station. The 2000 is a Cybernet 134. The 2001 is a Cybernet 002F, as used in the genuine Amstrad chassis. And here comes the one, Grandstand Bluebird, made by a company who do marker boys these days. Really good quality. Buzzing Bee never happened. Mercury never happened. Uh, Grandstand Communicator never happened. The Hawk, I've got one in bits on the shelf, which I bought in bits with a smashed front. We could mend that. Uh, Interceptor didn't happen. Gemini, we've got one of those. I never saw the Apollo. So a lot of this was never happened. Uh, Great never did one under their own name. Hamilton National never did anything for the UK. I wrote to them and they said no. Harrier, CBHQ, Mobile. Yes, they, all those happened. Harvard, 400M. We've covered one of those recently. It uses the CB240 chassis like the Alba CBH1, 8 CBM1 does. 402 is the Savinet 002F chassis. 420M is one of the best sets ever made uh, using the top end version of the Savinet 134 chassis with the bigger speaker. Um, Harvard 020 and 410 of the handhelds. Interceptor, then he did the TC300. Johnson's a GT868. What else have we got? JD Byron did the M2. Uh, LCL, it was the 2740 we ended up getting. They did the Major 3000. I think Matey's got, Matey Nottingham's got one of the other ones as a pre production. Microlink never did anything. Midland 2001, 3001, 4001. Uh, 810, which we did the other day, the emergency set. The handheld, which is a 7. 20 I think that could be there they also were going to do a, a really basic base station that never happened the Oscar 1 from uh, SMC um, high end uh, Cybernet 134 with a tiny little meter not many knobs on it but a really good set Radio Mobile 2 1 and 2 2 the Cybernet 135, seven hundred one three four. the PE Ranger was that either in a kit or build it yourself from scratch from the Practical Electronics magazine or bite ready built from Autumn Products. It says Modus Systems here. Um, and we did one which took me a year to actually finish, didn't it? 
Ref Tech 934 was a 934 meg set, so that's been and gone. Roto 220, 230, 240, all the Cybernet 134, but you've got board differences in the, in the receiver. You're going to have less receiver stages in the 220 than you do in the 240. The 230 can sometimes have the extra receive stage and sometimes not. Certile Search is another Maxcon 4E. Steeple Tone SCB1. Mm, don't think we saw that. The Sun, Sunrise uh, Samurai was the Shogun. And um, unfortunately, although it's a good set when it works, trying to find one which isn't dry joint, uh, even when they were new, is a problem. And Mr. Chippy has spent days and days and days doing them. And we will not take any in for repair. Uh, realistic TRC 1001 is the handheld. 2000 is the Unidem Mobile, the big version. Uh, the 2001 is the smaller version Unidem. The 2002 is an independent chassis set made, made by GRE for them. And that chassis is also used in the TSC, TRC 3000 base station. 10 Vox never did it. I wrote to them and they said no. <laughs> uh, Transcom, the 2000 is a great GT858. And the 4000 is a Cybernet 002F, like the Amstrad Genuine. We know about the Unidem 100 and 200, same electronics, different board. The Viper 88 is a World Sound PT40, which is kind of a not quite as good as the low TX40 version of that type of chassis. But you've got extra stages in the low version. WR Electronics didn't do it. And of course, you've got the York 861 and 863. The H67 is pretty poor set, but the one, eight, one and three, of course, are Simon at one, three, four. So that covers some of that drivel. Add teletext onto your telly for £199. Have an answering machine with two tapes in it. Small ads. Roger D, Nottingham. And Globe Communications, never dealt with them. What we've got on the back. By this time, I think we enjoyed Gone Boss, so you've not got any liquor stick adverts. We've gone to the K40. Good thing about the K40, here, here is the thing why it works so well. The cable on the K40 is like military grade, which we would use. That's the secret behind it. Um, really good cable. Right, so there we are. That's a look at February 1982, and hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.